Okay, okay. so this discussion is for nursing information systems. Now, let's understand what's the purpose and the objective of a nursing information system and uh, why and how do we use it now. So if you would look at the terms or the sentences highlighted on the slide, it would uh, remind us that it would ensure a working relationship with individual and family and still based on trust, respect, and shared decision-making using the appropriate electronic information system and technology. So it means that if we have the technology, the technology is actually intended for us to improve our working relationships. Okay, So this is contrary to what is usually happening and what is the usual hugot of our patients na, na, na napapabayaan na sila. They are not taken care of because nurses are too busy with the technology. So we need to be reminded that the technology is actually a way for us to work with the patients and even the family. And still, you have the trust, respect, and shared decision-making. Then another is that hopefully by this lesson, you'll be able to communicate effectively in speaking, writing, and present using culturally appropriate language. Now, um, if you would look at uh, here, this is a reminder of the different internet applications that we have and also the different equipment that we can use. Now, I think you've heard of the personal digital assessment in the previous lessons that we have discussed. So when you talk about the personal digital assessment, um, digital assistant or the PDA, okay, many textbooks in nursing informatics would be talking about PDA. Okay, what is this PDA? No? It's a pocket-sized computer that is capable of accessing the internet, sending and receiving data, even storing textbook worth of information. So it would appear to be as uh, a little computer. No? They would usually refer to it as a little computer. That's your PDA. Now, if you would look at the picture, that is actually what a PDA would look like. Okay? If you would look at the pictures, that is how actually the PDA would look like. Now, question, since you've been having your duty in the hospital, have you seen this in the hospital setting right now? Are there people who are still using the PDA in the hospital setting? May nakita, may nakita pa kayong ganon? Yes? Wala, no? Wala na, no? Okay? So, well, you know, Not when sure. personal digital... Yes? When personal digital assess, um, assistant went out at around the, the 1990s or maybe 1995 to 2000, um, it's, it's a wow, no? It's a wow. Everybody likes it. But you know what? As of this time, it's already considered to be an obsolete technology already because of, because of the presence of your mobile phone and your mobile devices. Okay? So wireless phone and wireless devices are seen to be the replacement of the function of your PDAs. Okay? Diba always, no? kung magbabasa kayo ng nursing informatics book or maybe later on when you're having your reviews already for the board examination, okay, people will be talking about PDAs. And please be mindful that these PDAs are already replaced by your mobile devices. And why, no? How? Uh, it's, it, your mobile devices, your wireless phones, kasi allow healthcare professionals to access information quickly, and it even allows communication. And as you can see, Mobile phones allow for easy updates. As you can notice, your mobile phones also allow for different applications to be used. Okay? Unlike the PDA, no? kung ano lang yung naka-install dati, yan lang yung pwede mong magamit. Pero here comes the mobile phone. You can have an application. Pagkatapos na pag may problema sa application, another version of the application will just be released. And then that improvement allows the application to go on and on in the utilization. Okay? Now, I don't know if you're watching Grace Anatomy. No? Okay, Grace Anatomy is a, a, a medical series uh, if you have Netflix. I'm not endorsing it, but uh, if you can notice, uh, they portray kasi medical practice in a real sense. No? Usually, medical okay. professionals would see that they portray um, medical practice in the real sense. They're using a tablet. They're using a tablet for the care of their patients. And if you can notice um, the situation, the cases of the patient are all reflected in that tablet. Okay? So it's, it's, a, it's an example that I can uh, drive on because it uh, does not... Uh, Ano nga? It does not violate patient privacy, no? Because after all, it's a it's a it's a movie, it's a movie, it's something shown in the television. Okay? But anyway, if you have time, you know, try to watch Grey's Anatomy. 
Now emails now it, it will be it will be a passe for me to define emails. You should be doing emails. Everybody should already be sending emails in this time of communication. Okay? So when we talk about emails in the past, they would usually say, wow, nakaka-email ka. Pero ngayon, guys, if you don't know how to send an email, they will be asking you, saan generation ka nang galing? Okay? Saan world ka nang galing? Okay? Email is already something that we all need to do. Now, when you look at email, it allows to send messages between one user to one or multiple user. So I can send an email, for example, if Aura and I are sending emails to one another, so I can send Aura an email, then she can reply back one-to-one. -one. Now, if uh, if I would want to reply to Hana, if I would want to reply to Gian, to Halami, I would be able to send to multiple users also. Now, since I've mentioned that, you need to be mindful now that your email could be used for work-related purposes. And oftentimes, that is the reason why we are provided emails of our own domains. That's why you would say, for example, at cpu.edu.ph, at idc.edu.ph, or others would say at blankhospital.com.ph. That means that it is the domain of the hospital that is being used. And that email is exclusive for that institution or the hospital. Okay? Which would mean, for example, if I am working as a nurse in Hospital A, and then Hospital A provided us with an email, I should be using that email when communicating for my concerns on Hospital A. Okay? Now, example, no? halimbawa si Justin, binigyan ng email, nakalagay justin at, um, justin at hospitala.com.ph. When Justin needs to email his head nurse, he should be using that email address instead of using the justin at gmail.com or justin at yahoo.com. Okay? Because that is the hospital email that's supposed to be used. Now, since we talk about email, please be mindful of the purposes of CC and BCC in your email. Okay? I hope you understand that the two, of course, is to whom will you be sending? Okay? To whom will you be sending? So your two is the receiver. Okay? Pag may nakita tayong two, blank, Okay, so ilalagay mo dyan yung receiver. Okay? Now, ano po ibig sabihin ng CC? Plus, your CC actually stands for copy furnished. Okay? Copy furnished. Pagkatapos, pag sinabi kong BCC, it would usually mean blind copy furnished. Okay? Blind copy furnished. Now, ano pong ibig sabihin natin yan? Halimbawa, plus ano? Halimbawa, I will communicate to the chief nurse. Okay? Now, picture the hospital setting. Pag Sa hospital tayo, kapag may concern tayo, okay, nurse tayong lahat, ha? isipin nyo nurse tayong lahat. Pag may concern ako, sino yung una kong kakausapin? A, head nurse, B, nurse supervisor, or C, chief nurse? Sige na, hula-hula lang. Hindi head nyo pa ito na-discuss. Yes, nurse yes. Head nurse. Head nurse? May nagsasabing head nurse. How about others? Yes. Nurse. Supervisor. My nurse supervisor then. Okay, how about others? Ayaw niyo magdretso kay chief nurse, no? Nakakatakot kasi yan, sir. Okay? Hindi naman dapat nakakatakot yung mga chief nurse, di ba? Now, so if you have a concern in your unit, halimbawa, nagtatrabaho tayo sa medical ward, no? So, kanino ako dapat first magre-raise ng concern? That concern should be first raised to my head nurse. Okay? Head nurse yung una kong kakausapin. Halimbawa, wala si head nurse, may sakit si head nurse, or sa ibang kadahilanan hindi magawa ni head nurse, pupunta tayo kay nurse supervisor. Okay? Or kung hindi kaya is, by the time na nakausap natin si head nurse, si head nurse na yung magre-relay kay nurse supervisor. Okay? Now, halimbawa si nurse supervisor, wala siya sa scope ng power ng nurse supervisor. Your nurse supervisor, if she cannot address the problem, would go up to the chief nurse. Okay? Tawag natin dyan, guys, is your um, ladder of communication. That's your ladder of communication. Di ba? In the same way, alimbawa, kapag may concern kayo sa akin, ang una nyo kakausapin is ako. Pagkatapos, if feeling nyo hindi na-address ni sir, pupunta kayo sa academic coordinator. Okay? You don't go right away to the president of the school. You don't go right away to the dean of the college of nursing. But you still need to pass through these channels of communication. Okay, para may proper line of communication tayo. Now, 
ano pong ibig sabihin niya ano? Halimbawa, nag-e-email tayo kasi yung trend na ngayon sa mga hospitals is nag-e-email. Okay? Bakit po nag-e-email? We save trees and actually email is easier to track compared to the hard copy. Okay? Now, please don't blame me if by the time you're working, nagpiprint pa rin sila at saka nagta-typewriter ha. Okay? Sabi ko trend. And I'm not telling you that all hospitals are following the trend. Okay? Now, going back to my point. Halimbawa, nag-refer na ako kay head nurse. Sabi ko, head nurse, I will be on leave by May. Okay, let's say one week of May because I will be having my vacation. Okay? Nag-approve na si head nurse. By the time na nag-approve si head nurse, mag-e-email ako ulit kay supervisor. Pag-email ko guys kay supervisor, I will have my head nurse copy furnished. I will have my head nurse copy furnished. In other words, to supervisor at at uh, blah 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 dot com dot ph copy furnish the head nurse. Bakit po kinapi furnish yung head nurse? Kasi gusto ko na updated yung head nurse kung ano yung pinag-uusapan namin ng supervisor. Are you getting the point? Okay. So when I talk about CC, it's somebody who needs to be updated. It's somebody who needs to know what's going on about the communication, but they are not the primary receiver. Halimbawa, halimbawa, I have a problem with student A. I will email to student A, CC, advisor of student A. Are you getting the point? Are you getting the point on that? Ha? So kung sino man yung dapat alam niya kung ano yung mangyayari or ano yung magiging decision or dapat alam niya yung information, siya yung kinakopy furnish. Are you getting the point? Ha? Yes, Kung ano yung punto ko? Okay, sige. Now, paano naman yung BCC? No? Kailan natin ginagamit yung BCC? Now, we are already in the era of data privacy. Tapos we are on the era of uh, dapat hindi lang tayo nag-share ng email. Nandiyan din tayo sa era na dapat inaingatan natin yung identity. O halimbawa, mag-e-email ako sa inyong lahat. Pero, Okay? Mind you, as a student, you also don't want your email to be shared to others. Okay? Let's say I will be sending an email to 500 students across the Philippines. Once I will be using the to or the cc, lahat ng email address na kalista dyan. Okay? So for, for example, I, I sent the email to all 500 students. Kulin will be able to see the email address of Justin. Justin will be able to see the email address of Marielle. Marielle will be able to see the email address of another student from another school whom supposedly tinatago dapat ng estudyante yon. Okay? Now, to prevent that from happening, that's the purpose of your BCC or your blind copy furnished. Ibig sabihin, the same message to all, but not everybody will be able to see the email addresses of all the students to whom it sent. Okay? Alam mo lang, kung baga group email siya, pero hindi mo makikita kung ano yung email address ng iba. Okay? That's for the purpose of privacy also. Okay? Or, for example, strict yung girlfriend mo, ano, mag-e-email ka, to blank at blah, blah, blah. Okay? Tapos gusto ng girlfriend mo, malaman na lang lahat ng ginagawa mo sa buhay, i-BCC mo yung girlfriend mo. Okay? Pag mag-send ka ng email kay teacher, halimbawa si teacher yung receiver, to teacher, okay? So receiver si teacher, okay? Pero hindi niya malalaman, hindi makikita ni teacher na yung email mo pala nakakopy furnish din sa girlfriend or boyfriend mo. Are you getting the point of BCC? Okay? She is included, he is included in the communication However, it is not known by the other parties that she is there. Now, be careful, ha? Okay? Yung example ko sa girlfriend, boyfriend, patawang example lang yan. Pero in real life, please be mindful on how you will be using the BCC. Okay? Hindi naman kasi pwede, alimbawa, nag-uusap kami, no? Magkausap kami ni Relen. Tapos hindi alam ni Relen, best friends pala kami ni Adora. Tapos all the while sa emails, nakasisi pala si Adora. So it's actually a breach of privacy and confidentiality on the part of Relen. Okay? So be careful when you will be using BCC. The principles of ethics still applies. Okay? 
And please also be mindful that when you are provided the work-related email, the work-related email must only be used for work-related purposes. So hindi pa pwede alibawa, uy, mag-a-apply ako ng NCLEX. NCLEX is a personal pursuit that you have. Do not use the hospital computer for that. Do not use the hospital email for that. Okay? Or alimbawa, gagawa ka ng Facebook page, sasabihin mo, gagamitin ko yung email ko sa school. Your email for school is supposed to be used for school purposes, not for your social media purposes. Okay? Are you getting my point on that, dear students? Ha? Huh? So, importanteng reminders yon. So, ano pong isang benefit ng email? No? Request and follow-ups are made faster and more documented as it is timestamp, clutter-free, and traceable in terms of message history. Okay? Halimbawa kasi sa hospital, alam yung anong, anong common nangyayari. Sasabihin, Sir, wala ka ng ban paper. No? Wala kaming ban paper halimbawa sa union. Tatanungin ka lang naman ng materials management office. Sir, kailan ka ba nag-request? No? Kailan ka nag-request ng ban paper? So, kadalasan sasabihin, Sir, wala ka namang request na napadala. But if you have the email, you will be able to see, oh, this is my request po sent through email. It was sent last January pa po. Ngayon po, Abril na, wala pa rin po akong ban paper. Okay? It is the email that will be able to defend you. Now, how about if, kadalasan sasabihin kasi, Sir, hindi naman ako nagbubukas ng email. Guys, we have a responsibility to open our emails and to address the concerns indicated there. Okay? We have the responsibility to open our emails and address the concerns there. Now, it's another benefit. Clutter-free po siya. If you're talking about office efficiency, okay? If you're talking about office efficiency and even quality assurance, okay? Punta kayo kayo guys sa mga offices. Yung pinaka-organized na tao diyan is somebody who does not have a lot of paper on the table. Okay? In a single office, the most organized person, the most efficient person is somebody who does not have paper on the table. The more the paper that you have on the table, it indicates that you still have a lot of work to do and you are wasting a lot of paper for that matter. Okay? And, or, pangalawang ibig sabihin, tamad ka lang talaga at wala kang tinatrabaho sa buhay. Okay? Then another is that it's traceable in terms of message history. I have encountered this several times already in the hospital setting wherein my staff nurses would say, for example, no, Sir, we were not able to receive the communication. And then I would just be around and then say, here is the communication that I have sent through email. And the nurses would be saying, Sir, we were not able to open it. And then I need to remind nurses that they are responsible to open their email every day. Okay, you are responsible to open your email every day. Now, again, ha, sinabi ko kanina, depending kasi yon on the hospital culture. Um, halimbawa, dito sa locality, meron ding mga hospitals na resignation could already be done online. Okay? Pwede kang mag-resign. Pwede kang mag-send ng letter online. Their purpose kasi is that, the purpose kasi of that is to prevent, again, a lot of papers and then also to the rapid approval of the resignation. But, there are still institutions which would say, dapat daw kapag nag-resign ka, papel talaga because it conveys respect. Okay? May mga ganong mentality pa rin na nagpe-prevail. So please, by the time that you are working, know muna the culture of the company before you would continue on using emails. In my case, I have already worked in the company wherein we are using emails. Halimbawa, ano? Halimbawa if Aura, for example, is, uh, is a nurse supervisor, I am also a nurse supervisor tapos nag-usap kami ni Aura about a certain concern. After naming mag-talk, what I usually do is that I will send an email. Hey Aura, we have talked a while ago and this is what we agreed on. Tapos si Aura naman dapat mag-reply siya kung tama nga ba or hindi. Anong purpose? Para ma-document kung ano yung pinag-usapan namin. Okay? So, para by tomorrow, Pagkabukas, hindi pa din sabihin ni Aura na, Sir, iba naman yung pinag-usapan natin kahapon. 
So my email trail akong ginagawa to confirm and to document what we have talked about. Okay? Plus, when you are working kasi, documentation is far way better than talks in the corridor. Yung mga usap-usap lang sa corridor class, it does not actually count no? as an official communication. So that's how, that's how we use emails. Even if we are just a room apart, yung offices namin class, one room apart lang, we still use emails because emails uh, allow for communication. And then through emails, you will be able to you will be able to ensure commitment to what you have agreed on. Okay? Now, another thing, let me see. So another thing that perhaps and hopefully you are also using is your bookmarks. Okay? Bookmark. Huwag yung bookmark na hard copy na pinamimigay nyo nung, nung tumatak mo kayo ng eleksyon, nung elementary kayo, ano? So that's that type of bookmark. I'm talking here about electronic bookmarks. So when I talk about electronic bookmarks class, it allows for quick re retrieval of information. Not just drugs, medical diagnosis, procedure, and necessary information. Depende na sa inyo yan kung anong uri ng information yung mariretrieve nyo. Okay? Now, bookmarks are actually situated differently in different applications. If you are reading a textbook, usually the bookmark is found on the side of your tablet, of your iPad, or, or your phone. But if you're using um, search, uh, how do you call this? Uh, search engines. No? For example, this one is Google Chrome. Uh, Google Chrome. If you are using it, as you can see, the bookmark could be located on top. So I hope you are using the bookmark, diba? Right? If you don't know how to use the bookmark, you go to a specific page that you would want to bookmark. Tapos click on your keyboard or press on your keyboard, Control plus D. Okay, control D. That would give you the option to bookmark that tab. Okay? Now, what do we mean by bookmark? If something is bookmark, for example, email. I usually bookmark my email in such a way that by the time that I need to access my email, I would just click here. I would just click the bookmark of my email. And then, oh, Biona, that's your email already. Okay? I also bookmark my YouTube channel so that I will be able to access it anytime. I also bookmark the Excel file that I use for the grades of my students so that in one click, I will be able to access it. Okay? Para hindi ka pa ulit-ulit no? na ginagawa yung proseso niyan. Okay? Again, it goes back to efficiency. Now, um, what's, the, what's the purpose of electronic devices in nursing care? And I hope that you will be able to start also to use some of these features. One, to set reminders for meetings and deadlines. So if you have your smartphones, don't just use it for games. No? You have your Google Calendar there. You have your Samsung Calendar if you're using Samsung. You have your iCalendar if you're using Apple and the like. So use those applications. It will be able to set your reminders on the important deadlines that you need to work on. Now, patient data management is also there. Improve staff communication is also there and provide more opportunities for efficiency. Okay, that's one purpose of your electronic devices. And look at this. When used appropriately, your electronic devices can actually improve the organization of the daily activities and administrative tasks. Okay? Yes, malaking tulong siya kapag ginagamit siya ng tama. Okay? Kapag ginagamit siya ng tama. Now, um, Limitations naman of using electronic communication. So yes, electronic communication is good, but again, there are limitations. Now, what are the limitations? It would decrease the clinician's presence in other patient care situations. Kadalasan kasi ano, hindi naman kadalasan. May mga nangyayari kasi paminsan-minsan na sinasabi na lang, no? halimbawa yung doctor sasabihin, ano yung nangyayari dyan? What happened to the patient? So phone call na lang, Pagkatapos sasabihin, sige, ipadala mo nga yung picture ng x-ray, ipadala mo nga yung picture ng, ng sugat ng pasyente, titingnan ko. So oftentimes, the doctor is not already there or even the nurse is not already there. Instead, a secretary would be addressing the concern of the patient. Okay? So it decreases the presence of patient care situations. Um, it's actually two-pronged. Bakit two-pronged? So pwede siya kasing tingnan as an advantage because it allows doctors to address the concerns of the patients even if they are afar. However, on the end of the, of the patients, parang they feel sad because the doctor is not physically present. Okay? Guys, be mindful. Ha? If you're working, for example, in the emergency room, 
oftentimes, not oftentimes, you will encounter anxious patient most of the times and almost always. Ha? Almost always mga anxious yung mga pasyente niyan. Kaya nga pumunta sila, kaya nga pumunta sila ng ER kasi nga takot sila sa buhay. Okay? Kaya nga pumunta sila sa ER kasi para sa kanila, emergency yan. And you know what? Oftentimes, what do they need? They just need the presence of a doctor and the nurse. Once they see that there is already that doctor and the nurse, they feel okay already. Okay? Point as an example, fever class, fever of less than 24 hours, we could not conclude anything clinically. Ha, kapag fever po siya as less than 24 hours, tapos yun lang yung signs and symptom, hindi pa po natin yan malalaman kung anong nangyayari sa pasyente. Okay? Even laboratories could not say na dengue na yan or whatever. Hindi pa. It's too early. No? It's too early to make a diagnosis. Now, oftentimes, we would talk na, ma'am, hindi naman yung emergency. No? Tapos, plus, when we talk about fever sa health assessment, ano nga yung temperature? What's the temperature that I can consider fever? Yes, yes. 38? Mm-hmm. What's what's the cutoff? What's the cutoff that is that's being used? Lower, lower. Yes. Thirty-seven point five, sir. Okay, thirty-seven point five, no? Thirty-seven point five fever. That's what we consider fever. And here comes these mothers who would go to the ER, and then hala nagaka fever yung anak ko. Tapos mam ano yung temperature? Thirty-seven one. Okay. Tapos here comes you as a nurse sa sabihin. Ma'am, hindi naman yan fever. Ma'am, hindi naman yan emergency. Eh, bakit umagang-umaga, 2 a.m., pupunta ka dito ng ER? Class, please understand that the mother is just worried of her child. That's one. Second, mothers also don't want to be blamed of the health concerns that this child or these children would have. Okay? And third, class, you don't know the circumstances that they have been through in the past. Malay mo, last year, nagka-fever yung anak niya tapos nagka-komplikasyon. So ayaw niya lang talagang mangyaring ganon. So, yes, you tell them that it might not be an emergency, but you still assess them. Okay, but you still assess them. Ha? You still assess and assist them. Okay, because oftentimes in my work in the ER, what I've noticed is that people just need the presence of the doctor and the nurses just for them to be confident that their patients are okay. Okay, kadalasan class yan lang yung kailangan nila. And then confidentiality concerns, of course. So it goes back to ethics. Now, security for technology. We, yes, there are problems in technology, but technology is also made secure. Now, what's one? Data encryption. So when I say data encryption, it could not be easily accessed. It could not be easily read by anybody without the proper devices. Then there could be also remote wiping to destroy the data. I don't know if you're using, for example, iPhones. Okay? Or kahit, ano, kahit Android phones ka. No? Kahit yung Android phone. Halimbawa, kapag, ma, kapag matakaw yung iPhone natin, kapag matakaw yung smartphone natin, we can actually open our accounts online and then deactivate the phone. Or hindi kaya delete the contents of the phone. Okay? Um, in my experience, that's more of madaling sabihin kasi here in the Philippine setting, napakarami pang area na mabagal yung internet. Okay? So, pag mabilis lang yung internet mo sana, pagkatapos your phone is still connected to mobile data or internet access, you can easily deactivate your phone. Okay? And you can easily, for example, locate your phone. Pero mind you, internet access here is not really that good, no? So I've been trying that on my phones also. And then um, you've noticed that phones have GPS trackers, right? So I've been trying also to leave my phone somewhere and track it. Plus, hindi siya live. Hindi niya nakukuha live yung location. So my delay talaga na 30 seconds to around minutes. So 30 seconds to minutes could already mean a lot if minakaw yung phone mo, di ba? Okay, so that's something I think that you need to be mindful of. But please be aware ha, that uh, one of the security is remote wiping. In other words, kahit malayo ka, pwede mong i-delete yung data from your phone. And then plus, um, there is secure encrypted data transformation over Wi-Fi. That's why if um, hindi kayo magtataka 
kung sa hospital setting nyo, there are um there are internet na hindi nyo pwedeng ma-access. Okay? May mga internet na hindi nyo pwedeng ma-access. Okay? That is intended for security purposes. Tapos meron po tayong facility-specific communication tools. For example, in the hospital where we are work, uh, where I used to work, we already have what we call the intranet. Okay? Um, uh, when I talk about intranet, it contains all the memorandum, it contains all the policies, it contains all the guidelines that the hospital, that our hospital has. Now, where can you access the intranet? The intranet class could only be accessed in our terminal computers in the hospital. Okay? Sa mga computer lang po sa hospital namin. Kahit mag-connect ka sa cellphone mo, sa internet connection namin, hindi mo maa-access yung internet. Ay, yung intranet na tinatawag ko. Okay? Now, don't be confused of intranet and internet. Plus, pag sinabi kong intranet, that is within the organization. Okay? Within. Ibig sabihin, sa hospital lang namin yan pwedeng ma-access. Pag sinabi kong internet, global, inter, inter-organization, ibig sabihin, iba't ibang organization, they were able to access that. Okay? So there are securities like that. And for example, I, I, was, uh, I, I have been using my own laptop in the workplace before I can connect to the internet connection na wired. Di ba, class, may wired the internet connection? As in, yung may wire talaga. Mas mabilis yun, class, eh. Eh, mas madaling mag-download ng movies dyan. In split second, you will be able to download movies. But anyway, before I am allowed to connect to that, I need to ask permission from my bosses. And then I also need to talk to the IT. And then there are limitations to my access. Tapos, sinisecure talaga ng IT that our laptops would have antivirus and other softwares okay, just to facilitate or just to ensure that our laptop is not a way for the hospital system to be hacked or to be accessed illegally. Okay, so there are things like that that are being done. Now, um, now let's do you have your two-way or multi-person video conferencing? Okay, so the same thing that we are doing right now. No? So it's visual communication between two or more users, regardless of your location, featuring audio and video content transmission in real time. Okay. Now, if you talk about this two-way communication dati, parang nag-umpisa yata sa Yahoo Messenger. I don't know, nakaabot pa ba kayo ng Yahoo Messenger? Pagkatapos merong Skype, narinig nyo pa ba yung Skype? Okay, napauso yung Skype. Pagkatapos siguro yung mga Friendster, tapos Face. Wala, Friendster kasi Friendster pala does not have, ano no? Your Friendster does not have call the call option. But your two-way conference, no? your video conferencing has emerged a lot. And right now, for example, we are using Zoom, Google Meet Messenger, Microsoft Teams, and many others in the market. Napakarami na pong video conferencing um, applications. Now, when you talk about your video conferencing, the needs is that you need to have an endpoint. Dapat may PC ka, okay? or your cell phone, or your tablet. Meron pong video conferencing server for the group video conference. You have the peripheral, the webcam, the microphone, the speakerphone, the headset. If we are doing it, for example, in the boardroom, okay, ano pong nangyayari? Meron po tayong high-tech na microphone sa gitna ng table wherein that microphone will be able to capture everybody who is talking to. Okay? Now, class, even before the pandemic, may video conference na. Let's say, for example, in the hospital, if we will be meeting our bosses from the corporate, okay, our corporate office is based in another province. So ano po yung nangyayari? Ano? May limang tao kami dyan, for example, sa boardroom namin here in the locality. Pagkatapos yung boss namin ng dyan sa TV. Okay? We are talking to our boss through the TV, through video conference. Okay? But then um, it needs a lot of maintenance no, for the equipment. And then yung mga microphone, ingatan nyo. Kasi once plus na masira siya, hindi siya madaling nare-repair. Okay? Kadalasan nare-replace talaga. Pagkatapos, there should be the software infrastructure. In the hospital setting or in the academic setting or any work setting, the tendency is that we have our official account. Okay? Hindi po yung pwede yung mga free na Zoom account. Nakikita nyo yan sa Facebook, di ba? May, may, mga bumibi, may mga bumibenta na oh, Zoom access for 100 pesos only. Illegal po yun. Ha? Illegal po yun. Huwag kayong pagbili-bili dyan. Okay? So, 
it needs to be official. Now, video conferencing is a high-tech, optimized, accelerate decision-making processes and cut customer and company staff travel costs. Uh, for this part, I don't know if this is really an advantage or not. No? So, sabi dito, it cut the travel cost. No? Ako kasi, class, I love to travel, especially yung mga work-related travel. Kasi in work-related travel, you are able to travel, plus your travel is usually for free. So, for example, in my work in the hospital, I would travel usually every three months or every six months to visit other hospitals that we have. Kasi doon kami nagmi-meeting no? sa ibang hospital ng korporasyon namin. But then, Yes, masaya siya. Okay, masaya siya. But with the advent of video conferencing, instead na mag-meeting kami sa ibang lugar, sa Zoom na lang kami nagkikita. So parang naging boring siya. No? So it's both a pros and a cons on that matter. Ha? Now, so examples are there. And then FaceTime. I don't know if you've heard FaceTime. It's commonly used by Apple users. But the main point here is this. No? Um, during the time of the pandemic, okay, during the time of the pandemic, the interaction with family members okay, has improved. Okay, again, sorry. The, the interaction with family members has improved okay, the behavioral problems in a patient with Alzheimer's, this, Alzheimer's dementia. Okay? Now, class Alzheimer's, kasi, di ba, oftentimes we, we remember Alzheimer's as forgetfulness. Okay? When we talk about Alzheimer's, sabi natin forgetfulness. So here comes a study no, conducted during the pandemic. Kasi during the pandemic, family members are not able to visit their family and loved ones in the respective nursing homes where they are admitted. So nakakalungkot daw. Okay? But it was, it was addressed by FaceTime and other video conferencing platforms. Okay? So malaking tulong daw when it comes to the behavior of these patients with dementia. Then, Text messaging or SMS. Okay? I hope you know what is a short messaging system. Our text text. So it's alphanumeric between cell phone, pager, or handheld devices. Okay? A form of communication in providing orders for treatment and care of the patient. Um, when I talk about use of your cell phones for taking orders from the doctors, again, re revisit your hospital policy. There are hospitals which would allow us and that would encourage it even. And there are hospitals which would still not allow it. Okay? In our case, we are allowed to take doctor's order through call, and then we verify the doctor's order through message. What do I mean by that? For example, if I will refer to the physician, Doc, I am referring about patient ABC. Patient had um, loose bowel movement three times already within the day. Uh, yeah, this is the first time that the patient had this. Tapos, uh, doc, do you have any recommendations? Halimbawa, the doctor would order online. Sasabihin ng doctor, okay, you fast drip. Or the order, the doctor pala will order, order through call. Sasabihin niya, fast drip 200 ml of your IV fluid. Alam niyo nung gagawin natin bilang nurse? Bilang nurse, ang ginagawa namin is that we text the order to the doctor. Doc, we, we talked a while ago, and then you said that we need to do fast drip of 200 ml, and then you want us to start these medications. Okay? So that's, that's one way for us to verify whether we captured the order correctly or not. And then ano po yung benefit ng text message? Nababasa po kasi siya. Pagkatapos, pwede po siyang ma-counter check, kagaya po ng email na sinabi ko kanina. Okay? which would allow us to protect also our liabilities. But again, different hospitals would have different point of views about it. So please know your hospital policy. Then social media. Social media is your personal space in the online world for your thoughts, appreciation, achievement, and sorrow. Diba sorrow? Napaka-common. Tapos uh, sharing of information depends on how, how, no? how, you, um, how we share how we choose to share it. So, yeah, reminder na sa social media, once you've posted it, everybody will be able to see it already. Now, what are the things that can be done in the social media? One is professional networking. Okay? Halimbawa, if you have your LinkedIn already, plus LinkedIn allows us to communicate with nurses in other countries. LinkedIn allows us to communicate with other healthcare professionals. Professional education organizational promotion, 
patient care education and even public health. Now on education, example, there could be live, sorry for that, there could be live events for FB, for organizational promotion, we could post activities about our hospital. Okay? Plus, kung nakikita niyo yung hospital, nagpo-post palagi ng mga activities nila, the purpose of that actually is marketing. So, the, the hospital would post what are the awards that they receive, what are the materials that they have, what are the things that they do to improve patient care. Okay? Now, patient care, social media. In the past class, you know, pag sinabi kong Facebook, hindi pa din gamitin yung Facebook for medical care. Okay? Pag sinabi kong messenger, Ayaw ng mga doctor na kinokontakt sila through messenger. Ayaw din yun ng mga nurses. But you know what? It's being slowly being accepted because physicians began to develop an internet and interacting with patients online. During the time of the pandemic, telemedicine came into practice. Diba? Telemedicine. Okay? As in um, remote medicine. You are in the city and then others are in the far-flung provinces. They could still do their consultation because of telemedicine. Pero mind you, since Filipino people are not very accustomed on the use of telemedicine platforms, okay, they usually went back to the use of messenger and the doctors welcomed it. The doctors also welcomed it because it's one way also to help the people who needs medical care. Okay. Class, iba kasi yung apps, iba kasi yung software na ginagamit supposedly sa telemedicine. I don't know if you've tried it, that software would actually allow you to, that software would actually allow you to book an appointment, you wait there for your time, that you will be called by the doctor so that the doctor will just click it and the like. Okay. Pero class, um, iba eh, nahihirapan yung mga pasyente gawin yun. So they went back to messenger. And again, doctors welcomed it. But doctors still welcomed it. Then, public health. On the public health global networks that can quickly spread information and allows mobilization of large number of people. Pagkatapos plus location tracking technologies rin. So halimbawa, I will be able to identify already where is COVID-19 is spreading. Maps are able to, online maps are able to depict it. Alam din natin kung saan tatama yung disaster. Tapos malalaman natin kung sino yung possibly affected by it. Okay? Now, other than that class, public health behavior, the public health behavior has been affected through social reinforcement. Ventola shared to us that by the time that the, the Facebook decided to allow users to post their donor status, okay, it resulted to a 23-fold increase in donor pledge. Okay? Plus, in countries like the US kasi, okay, they have um they have a system to monitor organ donation. So halimbawa, kailanganin mo ng heart, meron po silang organ donation list. Okay? Halimbawa, kailanganin, this patient, number one, needs heart. Pagkatapos, if somebody's heart will be available, halimbawa, may na-aksidente, hindi naman natin hinihingi. Pagkatapos, halimbawa, may namatay sa hospital na willing mag-donate ng organ. Right away, class, the heart is harvested. Basta compatible lang sila. Pagkatapos, class, once the heart is harvested, dadalhin yan, class, i-airlift kahit sa almang hospital, hahanapin kung sino yung makakagamit ng heart. Okay? That's your organ donation. Now, however, class, no, despite a very good system, matagal pa rin. Okay, matagal, especially kidneys na pakatagal. It would take sometimes months to years before they would receive their new kidneys or from the donor. But this study has shown na once daw nag-post sa Facebook, kalimbawa sinasabi ng mga pasyente, still waiting for my kidney to be available, still waiting for that liver donor. Plus, naparami. Naparami yung donors. Okay, naparami yung donors. And then studies say that it's because of social reinforcement. Okay? Parang yung feeling nila na nakakatulong sila. Tapos that information is available socially. Okay? That allowed them, that allowed people to appreciate the value of organ donation. Okay? Now, dangers lang. No? Poor quality of information, damage to professional image, the breach also of patient privacy, the violation of professional patient boundary, and licensing issues and other legal concerns. Now, where quality of information, we were able to touch that in our earlier lessons. Okay, allow me to focus on violation of professional patient boundary. Now, 
um, as students, you are oftentimes educated not to give your personal contact details to your patients. You're also educated that you are not supposed to give your messenger accounts to your patients. Why? It could be a violation of your professional patient boundary. Okay? May imagine mo na gabi may nagte-text yung pasyente mo. Okay? Or gabi nagte-text humihingi pa sa iyo kung anong gamot yung dapat yung i-take. So it's already a violation of the boundary. Then for the licensing and legal issues, salimbawa ako humihingi ng prescription, tayo po yung mga nurses and issuance of prescriptions is not in our practice. Okay? It's not within the bounds of our license. So hindi po tayo dapat namimigay ng mga prescriptions for our patients if there's no doctor who is doing it. Okay? Or knowledgeable lang. Okay? Now, so these are the professional guidelines on the use of social media. I will be discussing this on the succeeding lectures. Na. Okay. Do you have any questions so far?